So I'm looking out here. I'm, I'm watching you all, watching them, and you look like this. This is a time for celebration. It's a great night to gather together. We want to welcome you to the Classic Rock Christmas Eve Eve service. Uh, we know that it was a, a, a time, a hard time for a lot of people to be here on Christmas Eve. And so we want to do a special night. And thanks to this band and these singers and to our director, Sarah. Uh, they pulled this off for you. It's not going to be like any service that you've ever been to before, I'm here to tell you. So we want you to laugh, we want you to smile, we want you to clap, we want you to sing, we want you to be a part of this. We're going to weave the service together. Yeah. Yes, we Maybe. will. Maybe. We're going to Big see what happens there. We're going to make this a Christmas Eve you'll never forget. <laughs> we want to start, though, uh, by lighting the Advent candle. We want to get this all started, and we want to make sure that this uh, all becomes an important part of what we're about. Our Advent calendar scripture from t for today is from Luke 1, 5, 20. During the rule of Herod, King, Judah of, King of Judah, there was a priest assigned service in the region, in the region of Abijah. His name was Zechariah. His wife was descended from the daughters of Aaron. Her, her name was Elizabeth. Together they lived honorably before God, careful in keeping to the ways of the commandments and enjoying a clear conscience before God. But they were childless because Elizabeth could never conceive, and now they were quite old. The congregation was gathered and praying outside the temple at the hour of incense offering. Unannounced, an angel of God appeared just to the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was paralyzed in fear. But the angel reassured him, don't, don't fear, Zechariah, your prayer has been heard. Elizabeth, your wife, will bear a son to you, by you. You are to name him John. You are going to leap like a gazelle for joy, and not only you. Many will delight in his birth. He'll achieve great stature with God. Zechariah said to the angel, Do you expect me to believe this? I am an old man, and my wife is an old woman. But the, but the angel said, I am Gabriel, the centennial of God sent especially to bring you this glad news. But because you won't believe me, you will be unable to say a word until the day of your birth, your son's birth. Every word I've spoken to you will come true on time, God's time. Jesus' life was, was and is a gift to be treasured for all people of all time at all places. Our lives are also a gift to be treasured and used for glor God's glory. Let, let this candle... Let's light this candle and never, and never forget the gift God gave us in his sons, Jesus Christ. Will you pray with me? Loving God, help us to always treasure the great gift you gave us so long ago. Let this gift continue to shine light upon everyone's life in this world. Amen. Amen. Great job. So, again, I didn't want to be outdone by these guys tonight with all the leather. I'm just saying. So we do want to welcome you again. This is a, a really fun time. We, we were uh, talking about how we could really make this a special night for you. So when we uh, kind of uh, brainstormed a little bit, we came up with this idea about a rock and roll twist to our Christmas Eve service. We've done Beatles services in the past. We've done 60 services. But with this band, we thought we could do anything. So you're in for a surprise. Now, the, I want you to hear some good news. You ready for some good news? Okay. So there's no offering tonight. But... There is, in the mood of the night, there is a big tip jar on the way out tonight. So if you'd like to share your offering in a very special way, please hit up the tip jar. Uh, it, it, do you guys get any of it? No. no. Okay. So we just want you, if you have an offering or gift you'd like to share to support our ministry, we just invite you to do that. Now, the other thing I want to be, have you be mindful, during the last song, you're going to be uh, given a glow stick. 
Instead of having our candles, we're going to have glow sticks tonight. So I want you, uh, when you get those, and uh, uh, Teresa and Debbie will show you how to do it, but basically you break them and then you kind of uh, run your finger up them, but don't wave them until they, they get you to do it. All the lights will be off. It's going to be really a cool experience for you. So uh, you get a parting gift as well uh, from, from this place. So we want you most of all to remember and engage in the core audacious meaning of Christmas. And tonight's a special way for us to do this. I want to prepare you a little bit about what's going to happen here. This Christmas message thing is a very radical thing. It's a challenging thing. It's a very progressive thing for our world today. And maybe the message that you're going to hear tonight may make you squirm a little bit. I'm here to tell you, I promise you it's going to. It might even unsettle you a little bit, but I want you to really listen to what's at the core of the message for us tonight, because our hope is that you're going to walk away from this place and be able to share the power of God's message and God's presence in new and powerful ways. So I want you to engage fully with it. And if at the end of the night you walk away with here with a lot of questions or you're really mad or upset, Debbie's email address is... Bring it <laughs> so we really want to be in dialogue because there is a message we need to hear in this world today. And here at Peace United Church of Christ, we are the progressive church in the heart of Rochester. And we believe in that wonderful, powerful message that God gives us. So listen, we want you to sing, we want you to smile, we want you to have fun, we want you to celebrate, and most of all, we want you to hear God's old words in new ways full of peace and hope and love and joy. So let's come together. We're going to start with our scripture reading from Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to the Galilean village of Nazareth to a virgin engaged to be married to a man descended from David. His name was Joseph and the virgin's name Mary. Upon entering, Gabriel greeted her. Good morning. You're beautiful with God's beauty, beautiful inside and out. God be with you. She was thoroughly shaken, wondering what was behind a greeting like that. But the angel assured her, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and call his name Jesus. He will be great. He will be called son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will rule Jacob's house forever. No end ever to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, but how? I've never slept with a man. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the power of the highest hover over you. Therefore, the child you bring to birth will be called Holy, Son of God. So this night we gather because we really believe that peace is a reality. We believe that we can share love with all the world. And in this place, we can start being an inclusive community that welcomes all, not only into this building, not only into our town, but even into our country. And there's no exceptions to that. We want to welcome all because we believe in a peace train. And Mary said, I'm bursting with God news. I'm dancing the song of my Savior God. God took one look at me, and look what happened. I'm the most fortunate woman on earth. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. The God whose very name is holy set apart from all others. His mercy flows in wave after wave on those who are in awe before him. He bared his arm and showed his strength, scattering the bluffing braggards. He knocked tyrants off their high horses, pulled victims out of the mud. The starving poor sat down to a banquet. The callous rich were left out in the cold. He embraced his chosen child, Israel. He remembered and piled on the mercies, piled them high. It's exactly what he promised, beginning with Abraham and right up to now. You know, this God that we know came right to Mary. And our God is the one who comes to us in a burning bush, in the angel song, and a newborn child. Our God is the one who cannot be found locked up in a church building, not even in the sanctuary. Our God will be where God will be with no constraints, no predictability, no restrictions. Our God lives where our God lives, and destruction has no power, and even death cannot stop the living. Our God will be born where God will be born, but there is no place to look for the one who comes to us, because when God is ready, God will come, even to a God-forsaken place, like a stable in Bethlehem. So watch, 
For you know not when God comes. Watch that you might be found whenever, wherever God comes. Now, I don't know about you, but, but I'm really ready for God's presence to come into our lives and into this world that we live. Amen? Amen. And I really, really want to know, most importantly, what love is. From Luke chapter 2. About that time, Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire. This was the first census when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to travel to his own ancestral hometown to be accounted for. So Joseph went from the Galilean town of Nazareth up to Bethlehem in Judah, David's town, for the census. As a descendant of David, he had to go there. He went with Mary, his fiancée, who was pregnant. You know, we're really reminded of a childlike wonder this story embodies. The surprise on Mary and Joseph's face when they received unexpected news. The long journey they took together through dry and deserted <laughs> landscapes. All their doors were shut for them. And finally, the opportunity to make do with a less than desiring setting. One with poop on the ground, as the children like to point out. How many of us can find ourselves in this true story? Have we received unexpected news in our lives? Have we faced doors that have been closed to us? Have we made do with what's available even if parts of it smell like poo? Some of us this time of year can be filled with less than joyous emotions. There's grief, anxiety, debt, disappointment, conflict, and loneliness. And sometimes we find ourselves in times of trouble and hours of darkness. The brokenhearted people of the world weigh heavy on us. We seek wisdom. We seek light. We seek answers. And into these moments, into the darkness of our world, new light comes. New light comes forth in the light of a child who was born, who was born to change the world, to overcome the powers, to overcome the principalities, to challenge systems of oppressions and acts of hatred. He was born to change the world. And Joseph and Mary and the whole world realize that this little innocent child was born born to be wild. From Luke chapter 2 again. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in the manger because there was no room in the hostel. And so this night is still dark and a procession of Herods still terrorizes the earth, killing the children simply to stay in the world still knows it's Herod's, but it also still knows it's men and women who pack their dreams safely in their hearts and set off towards Bethlehem, faithful against all odds, undeterred by fatigue or rejection, to kneel to a child. And the world still knows those persons wise enough to follow a star, those who do not consider themselves too intelligent or too powerful, too wealthy, but yet they're bound to kneel before a child. And the world still knows those hearts so humble that they're ready to hear the word of a song and to leave what they have to go kneel before the child. The night. The night is still dark, but by the light of a star, even today, we can still see to kneel before the child. This child. This gift given to us is simply an inspiration. The inspiration for our ministry and our lives to make it from darkness into light. You are the inspiration. There were shepherds camping in the neighborhood. They had set night watches over their sheep. Suddenly God's angel stood among them and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. A savior has just been born in David's town, a savior who is Messiah and master. This is what you're to look for, a baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. 
At once the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the highest heights. Peace to all men and women on earth who please him. This indeed is an amazing night, a time for us to be joyful and to celebrate the good news. It's so great to have you all with us and to celebrate family from afar comes. And my daughter and her husband started the light parade up here. They were there full of joy all the way from the back row. And they came in to join us just for tonight. So we give thanks for that. But most of all, we want you to come and experience the joy like never before. Because when we sing God's praises, when we truly share the good news of the gospel, great things can happen. And there's great joy in this world. Joy to the world indeed. As an angel choir withdrew into heaven, the shepherds walked, talked it over. Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left running and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angels had said about this child. All who heard the shepherds were impressed. Mary kept all these things to herself, holding them dear, deep within herself. The shepherds returned and let loose, glorifying and praising God for everything they'd heard and seen. It turned out exactly as the way they had been told. Enormous and undeserved. And if those kinds of shenanigans are on the table, maybe I can also ask for ridiculous, audacious things. Like joy for my family. Christmas gifts this year. Well, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> are they sleeping or what are they doing? They're kind of sleeping. Oh, okay, that's what I thought. They're ready to do uh, Born to be Wild again? Is that the idea? So. It is a Merry Christmas indeed. We're not quite there, but we're certainly on the edge of it. So I want to just talk a little bit about that because it's time for all of our family celebrations to begin, all those festive dinners, toys and gifts to be shared, families together, celebrations indeed to be done. To all of that, I say, great. Happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, and Merry Christmas. Celebrate away. 
because we need some joy in our lives and in our world, don't we? So we need that time. But I also need to say, while all that is necessary and fun and good, and I support it, we need to get over this being the, the uh, full message of Christmas, because that is not really the depth and the true meaning of the Christmas message that comes to us from our scripture. In some ways, we've sold out our Christmas tradition to society and to the culture around us. Last week, our own Ernie Robert talked about his Christmas story from years back. And he said this, which really struck with me. He said, over the years, Christmas hasn't changed but we've changed Christmas. I found that to be very profound because over the years we've really changed what Christmas was and is and to be. But I think that over the centuries this, this radical message of God was sent to the world through Jesus the Christ. That message has become co-opted into a beautiful courier and knives and Hallmark card settings filled with eggnog and mistletoe and turned the gift of God into a multi-billion dollar boom to our economy. And if you want that type of Christmas again, I say, great, go for it, buy all the gifts you want. But that message can be found on wonderful cards at Hunt Drug. <laughs> but not in the gospel. Not in the gospel. I don't think that that long-awaited Messiah, Emmanuel, the Savior of the world, was born for Rudolph and for Frost, a, or even the Grinch, who I love, but rather the truth of our faith centers in the radical presence and the radical inbreaking message that God gives to us in Jesus' birth to transform this world and to change the world that we live into with a bold, audacious message because it's time, my friends, to be the church again. It's time for us to reclaim the truth of the gospel. So, my friends, celebrate away, enjoy one another, share the gifts, and rejoice. But before we do, I want to dive into the depth of this message that comes to us from our gospel. Now, what I want to do tonight, though, is spend our time with a, a, a man who's become one of my favorite uh, authors and presenters, a man who's going to be coming here to Peace United Church of Christ on February 8th through 10. We're going to be doing an all-church book read on a, a book called A Bigger Table. If you'd like to get this book, you're welcome to do so out at our welcome desk. The guy's name is John Pavlovitz, so I really want you to pay attention to what he says here because most of my message it comes directly from him. Because there's a very poignant post that he put out and a writing that he put on one of his blogs. And it talks about this very situation that we're in in this world, about this war on Christmas. You've heard that, haven't you? You've heard it in the news all over. And so this is what John has to say about it. So stay with me here. He says, yes, there is a war on Christmas in America. The evangelicals were right, the pulpit-pounding preachers were right, Franklin Graham was right, the Republicans were right, Donald Trump was right, Fox News was right, the religious right was right. Every single one of them was speaking gospel truth. They've all been warning me for years, and I don't want to believe them, lest hopelessness set in. But the proof is unavoidable now, and I need to confess, they were right and I was wrong, I was blunt, blind, and now I see it clearly. They told me that Christianity was under attack. It is. They told me that Jesus was being rejected. He is. They told me a, a brazen mockery was ma being made of his birth. It is. They told me the Gospels were being perverted. They are. They told me decent people were being deceived. They are. The only thing they neglected to tell me in their bombastic, sanctimonious, sky-is-falling sermonizing was the source is offensive. The brutal Yuletide assaults haven't come from atheists or agnostics, not from humanists or Muslims, not from coffee franchises or liberal media or progressive Christians. The very white conservatives who've been loudly sounding the alarm are the incessantly advancing hordes. They're the only ones warning warring with Christmas because they've forgotten their own story of what Christmas really is about. So listen to this. He says, Christmas, 
Christmas is a child of a Palestinian Jewish parents desperately fleeing politically ordered genocide. Christmas is a dark-skinned child born amid the smell of damp, damp straw and animal, animal dung because no human-worthy welcome could be found. Christmas is a poor, itinerant, street-preaching rabbi living off the generosity of those around him. Christmas is a compassionate caregiver, feeding and clothing, healing whoever crossed his path. Christmas is an activist fighting for the poor, condemning violence, shunning material wealth, and calling the world to live sacrificially for the common good. This Christmas is incompatible with its rabid nationalism. This Christmas is counter to its ravenous capitalism. This Christmas is resistant to its borders, closed and erected walls. This Christmas will not consent to its heartlessness, its callousness, its myopic America first hubris. And this Christmas is now hiding here in plain sight among the least of these. It is the weary father of four taking refuge from ice in a suburban church building. It is the exhausted family sprinting toward a border amidst chaos and, and tear gas. It is a transgender teenager trying to feel at home within her own body while being terrorized by lawmakers and preachers from without. It is the homeless veteran starving to death on the corners of its opulent mega churches. It is the grievously ill toddler whose parents have exhausted their resources trying to keep him breathing. It is a young black man terrified at a traffic stop because he has seen the viral body cam video a hundred times before. This is the Christmas these Christians are assailing and no one else. And so this season, while many hide behind ceremonial religion, armed with recklessly wielded Bible verses, dressed in ornamental piety, and drenched in flowery prayers and sweet songs, these religious people wage their war on Christmas. With every social media diatribe, with every piece of legislation, with every cell phone complaint to the police, with every ice raid, with every homophobic rant, with every mouth malfractured crisis with every incendiary Sunday sermon, we who seek to emulate Jesus and guard humanity need to speak this truth. We need to oppose their perennial act of aggression and their annual victim rhetoric. We need, my friends, to be the church. We need to fight for the sick child, the migrant family, the transgender teenager, the homeless veteran, the young black man, because when we do, we are perpetuating the heart of a Middle Eastern child, the child before us, born under duress in the place where livestock dined and where poop was all around, the one who turned the world upside down in the name of a compassion that knew no borders and a love that had no walls. And there is a war on Christmas, my friends, but we've chosen this side. We've chosen God's side. You see, you see, there's an old story to be told anew. There's a true story, not a fluffy story, not a feel-good hallmark story, because it's God's story. It's a tough story. It's a real story, a political story of a God in breaking into our darkened world. It's a story of love and inclusion and justice and liberation and welcome of all people. And we need this message of hope and peace now more than ever. Do you, know, do you know that this Jesus child, after he was born, that he and his family were refugees? They had to flee their own land because of the oppression that they were facing and even the fear of death, much, li much like our Central American brothers and sisters just trying to find a safe place for their families here in this great country. So let's hear it. Let's experience it. Let's share the message by being the church in new ways again, with clear sight, with distinct hearing, with the truth that God intended, because the Messiah, the Savior, has come into the world to liberate and to bring peace. And it all started so long ago in that smelly stable, because there's no room. Nobody else would take him in. Nobody else. And I think about all of our immigrant, our undocumented brothers and sisters. But here in this place, 
welcome. We're going to take you in, and we need to change the world so that all people can feel the love and the power and the glory of the story before us. On that night so long ago, when the child came bursting into this darkened world, the world changed forever. It was transformed, and all things became new. All things. So we hear that story. We know that there are still places in this world where people cannot be welcomed fully. There are hotels around, like this child, that they couldn't get into because there was a hotel. They couldn't afford it. What a great night it is indeed. In a moment, you're going to be handed your lightsabers, and please be careful with those. <laughs> But most importantly, I want us to enter into this spirit and for us to center in what God has called us to do and to be. To share that light and that love and the peace which God gives to us. We've got a new radical message, my friends. It's a powerful message and this world needs to hear it. And this is it. The word was first. <laughs> the word present to God. God present to the word. The word was God in readiness for God from day one. Everything was created through God. Nothing, not one thing, came into being without God. What came into existence was life. And the life was light to live by. The life light blazed out of the darkness. The darkness could not put it out. So my friends, we do have a hope for a new day. We have a day of the joy of liberation. We have the love is to be shared and accepted. So let's share the beauty of God's light boldly and audaciously, fully and wholly. Let's let peace be in this world. Because Jesus, Jesus is just all right with me. This is, this is all right. Merry Christmas, everybody. We hope you have a really blessed Christmas. And go from this place because God goes with you. Share that light and that love so abundantly this day. Amen. Amen. Amen.